Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk about algae. Is it a failure or not? I noticed recently that my tanks were getting a little full of algae, as you can see in this one here. Compared to how it used to be not so long ago in this video right here. So I'd just like to start by saying that having algae is definitely not a failure. It happens to every single reefer at one point in time, and it is something you can recover from. The particular algae I have in this tank and my other tanks is hair algae, so my cure for that is to add more cleanup crews, such as more snails, and that's what I'm going to do. It's important to stay calm and not overreact when these things happen. Luckily hair algae is just a nuisance algae and it won't hurt any of the coral or fish in the tank so just cleaning it up and adding more cleanup crew will take care of it in most cases. I struggled with this algae for a while until I realized that I just needed to add more snails. I would manually get a brush and a siphon hose and clean up all my rocks and my tanks and scrape the glass all the time and one day I just bought a whole bunch of snails and within a few days all the algae was gone. So now I know every time this pops up, I need to order more cleanup crew because they do deplete over time. And yes, even the frags in the frag tank occasionally get algae on them. So then I know it's time to add more cleanup crew. So in this case, I'm gonna add more snails. If the algae gets too long, snails won't eat it. So you may have to manually remove it first and then they'll come back and clean up the rest. It's a tedious job, but I don't like to sell or trade coral with any algae or critters on them. And even the 75 gallon SPS tank is not immune to algae. This tank will get hair algae in it as well, and I know that I have to replace the snails when I start to see it in there. I also have four pincushion urchins in this tank, but they usually can't get into the small crevices that snails can. Urchins do a really good job at removing algae, but these particular kind of urchins like to wear things as hats. Alright, time to add some more cleanup crew. These are mail order snails, so that's why there's not a lot of water in them. From what I read, this is to prevent ammonia buildup in the bag when you open it. And the acclimation procedure is to let them warm up in the tank water and just put them right in. No drip acclimation is recommended at all because it'll allow ammonia to build up because the pH will rise and so will ammonia. And these types of snails you have to put right side up because they're sort of like turtles. Once they're on their back they cannot flip themselves over and then other crabs and critters will come and eat them. So you want to make sure you put them in the tank right side up. And do know that if you get astria snails like these you will have to flip them over every day. You'll start to wonder how they even survive in the wild because they're always on their back it seems. And it's not like all the snails are on their back every single day, but there are a few that you'll have to flip over. Alright, one tank down. Yeah, I just repeat the process for every tank. Float the bag for about 15-20 minutes. Open it up and put the snails in right side up. I'll probably only have snails in this tank because hermits won't do well with no rocks and urchins will grab the frags and carry them everywhere. A tank like this would be good for choker snails because they can actually flip themselves over. Alright, another tank done. And now you get to watch me make a mess of the 75 gallon SBS tank. It seems like every time I put my hands in this tank, I'm always breaking pieces of coral off. Yep, there goes another one right there. So yeah, that's a consideration to have with an SBS tank like this one. Every time you put your hands in the tank or if you're trying to clean the glass, you may break some coral off. But in that case, you can always give some away or sell it. And now to flip them all over so they're right side up. In case you're wondering, I'm using those acrylic rods that you see at frag swaps to flip the snails over. And awesome, another tank done. And now I'd like to share with you a few different algae types and what I use to fix them. 
So for hair algae, I suggest scrubbing the algae off and siphoning it out, and then introduce more cleanup crew. I really suggest snails over crabs because the crabs will eat your snails. And also snails can clean the glass. I use Fluconazole for Biropsis. It's the type of algae that looks like a fern. Cyanobacteria can be green or red, and I like to use ChemiClean for the directions for that. And the dreaded dinos. It's not the end of the world, but first figuring out which type of dino you have will go a long way in treating it. Film algae I usually siphon out and use fluconazole as needed. I suggest using a microscope to ID the type of algae so that way you know what to use to get rid of it. And depending on what type of algae you have in your tank, blowing it off can make it worse if you don't siphon it out. It's only been a couple days, but it's already starting to look better. I blew off the rocks, I siphoned it out, I added some snails, and I'm happy with the results so far. It'll take a little longer to get back to the way it was, but being patient will allow it to happen. I think I'm going to add an urchin or two into this tank as well to help out the snails. And in the new frag tank, the snails are starting to make a dent, which is good. I so didn't want to put any frags in this tank for at least another three months, but I didn't really have a choice with all the fragging I had to do in the 75 gallon SPS tank. The frags in the main frag tank are looking much better. I used a turkey baster to blow off the algae and siphon it out, and the snails are cleaning up the rest. And it's happening just in time too. I have a trade show to do this weekend, so now the frags will be nice and clean. And here we're back to the 75 gallon SPS tank. This tank has seen many types of algae and also dinoflagellates. The key to getting rid of both of them is patience and consistency. And please take note that there are other methods and cleanup crew available to take care of algae. These just happen to be the ones that I use in this video. I'll leave you now with a look at the 75 gallon SPS tank. Thank you for watching and happy reefing.